From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Our top story tonight, the closure of the Flint Hills refinery is apparently going to cost North Pole residents money. An estimated loss of $180,000 in property tax revenue may be made up by hiking the town's sales tax. Tonight, the North Pole City Council will hear first reading of an ordinance to raise the city's sales tax by one half of a percent. Additionally, the ordinance calls for a 2% increase on the city's tobacco excise tax and a 1% gain in North Pole's alcohol sales tax. The council will also look to advance North Pole Mayor Bryce Ward's 2015 budget to a third reading. Now that spending plan currently sits at $5.6 million. The Fairbanks North Star Borough School Board will enter into mediation with family members of a student who was allegedly sexually assaulted by longtime employee Claude Falks. Board members met this afternoon during an executive session. Borough attorney Jill Dolan updated the board on the status of the current litigation. The unnamed student victim and his family are seeking over $1 million in damages. The school board offered a total of $270,000 to the family, which was rejected by their lawyers. The case will enter into mediation December 1st in Seattle. We do have a confidential letter due to the mediator today, and that would just be to express our position for um, potential resolution at mediation. The mediator that was selected was um, a retired judge. His name is Terry Lukens, and he does have experience in these types of matters and in, in mediating them. Board members spoke briefly after the executive session. President Heidi Haas said the board gave direction to their attorney to move forward in mediation with the family. A follow-up special meeting was scheduled for December 2nd, in which Dolan will update the board about the process. After an investigation into heroin distribution in the interior, a Fairbanks man is facing serious felony charges. 40-year-old Lamon Washington is charged with misconduct involving a controlled substance in the second degree. According to an affidavit, an, import, an informant for the Alaska State Troopers arranged a narcotics purchase meeting with Washington on November 19th. Troopers say Washington provided the unidentified informant with half an ounce of heroin in exchange for $6,000. Washington was arrested and remanded to Fairbanks Correctional Center. He was arraigned in Fairbanks District Court November 21st. Bail has been set for a man accused of attempting to carjack a vehicle in North Pole during a pursuit with police. 28-year-old Michael Jumper is facing eight charges, including failure to stop, attempted vehicle theft, and fourth-degree assault. Today, Superior Court Judge Paul Lyle set bail at $3,000, plus the condition of court-appointed third-party custodians. Authorities say Jumper was found at the Safeway in North Pole asleep in his vehicle after patrons called in to report a suspicious person. Police say when they tried to contact him, he drove away, later jumping from his vehicle and trying to pull another driver out of a stopped car. Jumper was taken into custody shortly afterwards. Trial for his case has been set for January 2015. A Fort Yukon woman has been charged with felony assault after she allegedly ran over a man with a car. 18-year-old Maria Peter is charged with second-degree assault in the November 14th incident. Court documents say Peter attempted to drive off in a vehicle owned by the victim who tried to stop her by placing his hands on the hood of the vehicle. Now, witnesses on scene said the victim slipped on ice and fell to the ground. Peter then allegedly ran him over with the front wheel on the driver's side. Peter was arraigned yesterday in Fairbanks Superior Court. Okay, when we come back after three days of conferences, the new transition team has been named and the lieutenant governor says they are ready to go. Also, we'll spotlight another one of the 21 agencies making up the United Way. Those stories are next. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Fairbanks Evening News. The walker Malat gubernatorial transition team wrapped up its three-day conference yesterday. One recurring theme throughout the weekend was the diversity of the participants. The transition team was comprised of 246 Alaskans from 43 different Alaskan communities. Lieutenant Governor-elect Byron Malat spoke about the diversity that they say will define this administration. Be nonpartisan. It doesn't mean that parties disappear. But in our looking throughout the state for folks uh, to assist, uh, to help guide us, uh, to, to uh, provide policy advice, even to hold uh, positions of responsibility, uh, we're going to be looking all across the state. Well, it's the spirit of Thanksgiving times two. Twins Nicholas and Alex Prainer are behind a generous donation involving their peers and baking. 
They're working with the Fairbanks Community Food Bank to make sure no one goes hungry during the holidays. Amy Chazé has the story. Covered up for how long? Anybody remember? Yeah. Somewhere hot, cold, or warm? Warm. A free program just for kids is traveling across country, teaching little chefs in training at Ladd Elementary School. 11-year-old brothers Nicholas and Alex Prainer teamed up with the head chef of King Arthur Flour to learn his baking techniques, all while realizing the importance of giving back with bread made by scratch. Even more important, they say, than get this, playing video games. It's a great way to help people, and we do play sports as that, but it's just... It's extra time that you could be playing video games. I mean, video games don't help you with anything. I mean, it's helping the community and we're helping kids and grown-ups in need. This is really exciting because we're able to have 40% of who we serve are local students. So to be able to bring kids in and have them bake bread and serve their peers, that's really amazing. Weaver estimates that this bread project will feed 800 households. Alex and Nicholas say this is the true spirit of the season. And the best part is giving back <laughs> and helping the community one loaf at a time. With most all of the numbers in, it appears enrollment in the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District is down by about 300 students. Official enrollment has been set at 13,765 students. The drop in student numbers could mean a loss of about $1.2 million in funding from the state. In the past 16 years, enrollment in the district has dropped by just over 2,000 students. We continue this evening with our series on the many agencies that make up the United Way of the Tanana Valley. Tonight, Mike Schultz spotlight, spotlights the ACCA. The Alaska Center for Children and Adults, or ACCA, has been in the community since 1946 with the mission of improving the lives of people with disabilities and their families by providing quality of diagnostic, therapeutic, educational, and referral services in conjunction with other community providers without regards to ability to pay. Susan Kessler is the executive director for ACCA, and she says the United Way has a major impact in the way their agency is run. Yeah, so we really do rely on United Way funding at ACCA, and there's a couple different ways we use United Way funding. The idea we have primarily is that we take United Way funding and we use it to fund new programs and new initiatives that may not have secure funding. And then over time, we develop secure funding for those programs and we start another new program. And then, of course, um, the flexibility of United Way funding also just supports some of our administrative costs, which often aren't funded through grants or um, other uh, income streams or sometimes are even specifically excluded. I asked Susan, with all they do, what is it she is most proud of for the ACCA? The thing I'm most proud of at ACCA is that we provide all of our services first without regard to ability to pay. So we don't turn anyone away uh, based on whether they can, uh, whether they have health insurance or whether they can pay for the services out of pocket. The United Way campaign still runs until the end of March, but you can still donate and remember all donations stay within the community. Mike Schultz, News Center 11. So it seems to me that Joe Cook probably had a pretty busy weekend with sports. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's always, always got a recap that extends into Tuesday and Wednesday. He's <laughs> recapping the recaps. Yeah, that's right. Okay, <laughs> Joe Cook after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back, Interior Sports fans. Joe Cook here in a sports seat for you. This Monday evening with your weekend recap, the Fairbanks Ice Dogs were tasked with winning their last home game of 2014. That task was completed on Saturday night against the Minnesota Magicians. The first period was scoreless, but Lonnie Clary set the tone with a fight for the ages to give the home crowd riled up to start the game. Jacob Hetz, he broke the 0-0 tie at the 335 mark of the second period. And later in the period, Clary out of the sim bin and slapping in goals to give Fairbanks a 2 
2-0 lead. Mark Michaelis, though, he rallied the Magicians with the power play goal with seven seconds left in the second period, making a 2-1 game. After the Magicians tied the game with a Thomas Delaney tally in the third, Chandler Madri scored the go-ahead goal on a power play at the 9:41 mark in the third period. Had some Madri, they connected with about six minutes left in the game. The Ice Dogs win their final home game of 2014, 4-2 to over the Magicians. Patrick Munson made 25 big saves for his 13th win of the year. Hetz led all skaters with three points. Fairbanks improves to 17-7-2 heading into Thanksgiving. This series sweep was dedicated to the late Randy Prophet, Rob Prophet's father, who recently passed away. But I think the most part was we're going to do it for Randy Proffy, you know, Rob losing his dad and everything like that. Came in to like give Proffy a little homecoming, get those two two wins and get a nice break. So we did it for him. Um, our power play was struggling in this game and we tried to get a lot of shots on net. So I kind of just threw the puck on net and hoped it went in and luckily it did and it was big for us. Yeah, you know, we have a lot of offensive firepower. So to be able to, you know, grind out a win and, you know, kind of get a character win, it really helps our team. And, you know, we want to keep this rolling like we did last time and get on a big streak. And Saturday night, the Nanix men's basketball team went up against the undefeated Dragons of Minnesota State Moorhead in the final of the GCI Alaska Invitational. UEF got off, got off to a nice start, leading 25-12. Ruben Silvis, he had a team-high 10 points and 6 boards in this one. The Dragons wore it back, though, behind the plate of Jordan Reavers, who got hot. The Dragons won a 16-2 run, and they would not trail again. Reavers scored a game-high 26 points. He had 6 assists and was 6-8 from 3, and he had no turnovers. The Dragons win this one 74-52. Minnesota State wins this year's GCI Alaska Invitational. West Alabama was the runner-up. Reavers was named MVP, and Ruba Silvis made the all-tournament team for UAF. All three teams, you know, great challenges. Uh, West Alabama, they're a very athletic team, and I know Black Hills, they work hard. And, uh, Fairbanks, I mean, they shot 50% in the first half, gave us a great challenge, and it was great. It was good for us. We just got off to bad starts the second half, and, you know, that's just a, that's just a mental toughness thing and you got to be ready to go you know you got to be able to be ready to start both halves and obviously we had a tough time the last two nights and the Alaska rifle team point blank shot the lights out this weekend hosting a try meet with number two Kentucky and number five Nebraska Alaska swept the visitor this weekend yesterday the Nanak shot an all-time program record of 4700 points and a 47 Four six five seven win over the Cornhuskers. Sega Madalena shot a 599 in air rifle, which is one point shy of a perfect score. Ryan Anderson won small board with 584 and was third in air rifle with a 595. Storm Butler, he was second in small board with 582. He registered a 589 in air. UAS Casey Barnes shot a personal record 574 in small board. Alaska also beat number two Kentucky on Friday. The Nanix will be on the road when they return to action in 2015. The Nanix will face the Ohio Iowa State Buckeyes in the Akron Zips on January 11th. The Nanak hockey team got their first conference win of the year in a 7-5 win over Lake Superior State on Friday, but on Saturday, the Lakers prevailed in overtime in a tight game. The first tally wasn't until the second period. Stephen Perfetto scored the game winner 1 minute 44 seconds into overtime. Josh Atkinson and Sean Hochhausen scored for the Nooks. Bryce Schmidt led the Lakers with the goal and an assist. Alaska is now 6-6 six six overall and 1-5 and in the WCHA. They will host Northern Michigan this Friday night at the Carlson Center. And now we end the Monday Weekend Recap with this week's I-5 Interior Top 5 Plays. At number 5, check out the sick move from North Pole senior Jason Donald, who gets the goal in an 8-1 victory over Hutchison on Tuesday. Number 4, some high school wrestling, North Pole's Cole Vinton gets a close 3-2 win over Caden Ott of Lathrop as the Patriots win their dual meet 42-27 on Tuesday. Number three, Hans Gorowski of the Ice Dogs decides to fire one on net and somehow gets the goal despite the tough angle on Friday night. The Ice Dogs win their last two home games of 2014 over the Minnesota Magicians. At number two, Sagan Mandolina was one point shy of a perfect score and air rifle for the Nooks shooting 599. The Nanook rifle team shoots a new program record 4,700 points against number five Nebraska on Sunday. At number one, first year player and junior transfer Kyle Tomlinson hits the game winning three pointer with nine seconds left off the Ashton Edwards assist as the Nanooks win their season opener 68-66 over Black Hill State in their GCI Alaska Invitational opener on Thursday night. To select the play of the week, go to the KTVF Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter pages, comment on the post, or email Joe Cook at KTVF11.com for your pick. The play of the week will be revealed this Friday. The I-5 Sports Report is brought to you by Adiant Orthopedic Physical Therapy. 
And that's a wrap for sports. Thanks for rocking with me for a little while. Mike Schultz is next with your full with the forecast, and we'll catch you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back into the Fairbanks Evening News. Mike Schultz with you once again. Hope you had a good weekend. A little bit of snow falling out there right now. We're looking at a little bit more falling throughout the day tomorrow. Maybe an inch. That's about it. And after that, clear skies and cool temperatures through the Thanksgiving area, uh, Thanksgiving time period, I should say. Look at this photograph. William Blizzard was able to capture this flaming sunset. We call it that for obvious reasons. What a gorgeous shot that is. Just incredible colors. And as always, if you have a photograph you want to share, by all means, send it to me at photos at ktbf11.com. That's a beautiful photograph. All right, here's your numbers right now. Five degrees and some light snow at the airport after a high of six. The low last night, zero. Record high, 1992, got up to 44 that day, 45 below in 1994. Sunrise and sunset, five hours and 14 minutes. That's a loss of about five minutes from yesterday. And our aurora watch, well, you're not going to see any auroras tonight because the cloud cover is going to keep things out, I think, but it would be a moderate level of three. And as far as air quality, once again, we have problems. Fairbanks and North Pole are in an, an unhealthy for sensitive groups category. That will be lasting through the day tomorrow until 5 o'clock in the evening. Now, what's going on across the rest of the state? Well, for the most part, we're looking at, again, a little bit of flow coming out of the southwest. There's the uh, pocket of moisture that's moving to the Fairbanks area, uh, skirting around the Alaska Range. That's why we're getting it and nobody else is. And uh, things are just a little bit showery over southeast Alaska and across southern sections of Alaska. Not too much going on there. As far as our map is concerned, here's what it looks like. And you can see rain is falling once again in Juneau and Ketchikan, 40 degrees in Ketchikan. Anchorage, uh, partly cloudy skies, 31 degrees. Cold Bay, cloudy skies up and down the west coast. Uh, kind of chilly at Dome, only 7 degrees there. 1 degree at Barrow with cloudy skies. Fort Yukon, it's 6 below zero. Lower 48 weather over the Pacific Northwest. Some scattered showers around the Seattle area. Nice weather over Southern California. More storms rumbling across parts of Texas and that is uh, leading to uh, some pretty good widespread rain all the way across the Gulf Coast regions. And as far as our satellite is concerned, you can see again more pink moving on down the slopes of the Rockies, heading on down to the south and over the Pacific Northwest. A, a band once again of freezing precipitation there. Widespread snow moving across the Great Lakes. Uh-oh, heading toward the Buffalo area once again. And the temperatures are expected to really crash tomorrow. Look at the temperatures, 60 degrees today in Buffalo, but tomorrow 38. Boston 66 today, tomorrow 38. And New York dropping down to 41 degrees, Philadelphia at 40. So a pretty good band of cold air moving in from the northwest. And later on this week, the jet stream will continue to move from the west and northwest to the southeast. Again, going across the Great Lakes and more lake effect snows expected on Thanksgiving. Oh, joy for those folks there. Back to Alaska for tomorrow. In the northern sections, partly cloudy skies at Barrow, mostly sunny skies in Nome, and some light snow for Fort Yukon. Here in the interior, we'll be looking at periods of snow throughout the day, maybe an inch possible for Fairbanks, Healy, and Delta Junction. Over southeast Alaska, it looks like uh, the rain changes to showers across the region. And over the southwest part of the state, looking at rain and snow showers at Bethel, cloudy skies at Cold Bay, and partly cloudy skies at Kodiak. While over the south central regions, partly cloudy skies in Homer, cloudy skies for Valdez, and mostly cloudy skies in the Anchorage Bowl. Well, a new week. Once again, time for our kids' weather. And this week, we're going to be talking with the kids from Ladd Elementary School. Here's a young man with a story with some wild weather in it. Hi, I'm Connor from Miss Thurman's sixth grade class, and I'm going to be talking about my weather story. I was in Germany, and we sat down for dinner, and it was sunny, and then it started raining, and we had a thunderstorm, and then it started snowing, and it started hailing, and when we were finished with dinner, it was sunny. I think the only thing left out was a dust storm. Again, thanks to Mount McKinley Bank for sponsoring our kids' weather, and tomorrow night a young lady will be here sharing a very nice picture of the aurora that she drew. Here's your forecast for the remainder of the night. Cloudy skies, light snow developing. It's already out there right now. Two degrees for the overnight low. Tomorrow's forecast, periods of light snow throughout the day, maybe an inch of accumulation. And the extended forecast calling for morning snows on, uh, actually, <laughs> it's Wednesday. How that temperature can there? Anyway, uh, morning snows on Wednesday, and then we're looking at clear skies through the rest of the period. And uh, temperatures will once again start to cool off as we're looking at overnight lows dropping down below the zero mark. Daytime highs in the single digits. So a little bit of snow out there covering up some of the things, but that will make driving even more fun in the morning, so keep that in mind. Well, that's not good. No, not good at all.
Well, just about an inch is that that's usually how much it takes to just really coat that road and really make it kind of treacherous out there. Yeah. So. The question is when can I get my skis out? <laughs> well, not for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The long range is not showing any any uh, any kind of real big storms coming our way, so hmm. I have to hold them in, in abeyance for right now. <laughs> they're they're just Wanting to come out, yeah. I'm telling well, this you. This is not going to be 40 below on Thanksgiving. True. That is We've definitely had many times before. Positive. That That's is the positive. positive of this whole <laughs> thing. Good job, Mother Nature. All Nature. right, Good thank job. you, Mike. And that will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, my hometown, Buffalo residents, are bracing for another widespread. Right, I can't even talk. Widespread, widespread flooding. Thank you. That's nice of Brian Williams. Widespread flooding, she's meant to say. <laughs> Join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. <laughs> From all of us here at the News Center, have a good night. night. Good night. Awesome. <laughs>